Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Tuesday, the 13th of June. I want to talk to today about a little bit about a phrase I kept hearing over the weekend. What about isms? It's amazing how many new words our society is coming up with lately. Um, I remember when um, the word six pack made it into the dictionary. I remember driving down the road in, Sar in Stratford. It was probably about the year 2000 and they talked about a six pack and the definition was both a six pack of beer and the six pack of abs of a young man. It was kind of disturbing. We also had a double double, very Canadian, you know, two cream, two sugar, things like that. But anyway, what about ism has become part of our lectionary, at least for a little while. And I'd like to talk a bit about, about what about isms and standards. When I was growing up, we had rules in our household, in our school, all, you know, in society, there were certain things you could do. Some of them were written, like you, when you're in school, you sit in your own desk. Uh, we could not chew gum. We certainly couldn't wear a hat in school. These were all things that were punishable by detention, by getting in trouble, you know, things like that. Um, and then there are those rules that you just know, like you come home at night when the street lights go on. Um, when, you know, if somebody else's mother gives you gives you an order when you're out playing in the streets or with your friends, that order is the same as if your own mother had given it to you, you know, not written down, but it was the standard of our, our society, the one I was in anyway. And if we tried to pull the, 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 the kid like crap, I'll put it that way of what about so-and-so, um, it usually, well, well pretty much a hundred percent of the time backfired. Like, you know, my friend Stacy, she was the oldest in her family. She was two years older than me. Her brother was my age. And when she was allowed to stay out after the street lights went, uh, went on in the summer um, for a little while, probably only about 10 minutes, but, uh, and my mom kept insisting, no, you need to come home. This is, you know, it's time to get ready for bed. Well, what about Tracy? She gets to her mom's so nice at blah, 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 you know, all the arguments that a seven year old makes. Um, and the what about ism went nowhere. As a matter of fact, my what about isms, what about Tracy, um, sort of went backwards. So instead of being 730 that I was supposed to come in, it became 720 and 715 and 710. And pretty soon it might look like not going out at all. <laughs> Learned pretty quickly that what about isms were not really a legal way of looking at the world. Um, it might be something that I wanted to do, but it wasn't something that the people around me <laughs> were willing to, to step up and acknowledge. But it seems that in our society now, particularly politically, um, what about isms have become the standard currency of the day? Um, we have, we have expectations about, um, the way our politicians should act. Let me rephrase that. We restate that we used to have expectations about way our politicians should act. Now we have these comparison points. Well, if, if, um, prime minister Trudeau did that, well, you know, what about when Prime Minister Harper did that? What's the difference? Well, if he could do that, then how come he can't do that? Um, if, you know, Prime Minister, the Premier Smith does, says this, well, what's that against what Premier Ford did? What about ism? It, it, does it mean that they're right? That if one does something, the other is automatically, it's okay to do it? No. Um, just because one person has established doing something that's not a good thing to do doesn't mean that everybody else should be able to do it. Like the what about isms are, 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 are blowing my mind right now. Um, what I've been listening to, um, and for those of you who don't appreciate the fact that I'm a Canadian speaking about American politics, might as well turn off the radio or turn off your video. Um, but one of the things that's sort of inundating the news above and below the border is the whole, the Trump stuff, right? About he's been indicted. Um, and there's like 37 counts or something like that. And, um, a lot of this is about, um, you know, information that he kept and they keep throwing out these, what about Hillary Clinton? What about Joe Biden. They don't mention what about Mike Pence, but so much, but the, what about like, well, they didn't get prosecuted. So how come Trump has to be, this is a political end game. This is a, this is just, this isn't legal. This is, this is, you know, this is poison pen. This, 
what about instead of focusing on the standard what is the standard of the law what is the standard of society um, the standard being that classified documents don't just get to go in the back of a minivan or put in a basement or in a pool room or in a bathroom or you know lugged from room to room just for the heck of it um, there's a there's a process the standard is there's these documents and this is how they're handled regardless of who is handling them and if if there needs to be a change then there's a process to go about making that change and if you don't live up to that process then you are responsible for your actions, whether they're legal or simply consequential, like, you know, you lose privileges or you don't, you know, people aren't able to put their hands on the information, whatever it might be. But instead of looking at the situation and saying, what is the standard? We now seem to be looking at everything through um, sort of a smoke and mirrors or a shell game. Let's make everybody look over there. So instead of acknowledging that maybe something was done that was untoward or something that was maybe not, I'm not trying to get into the politics of it, but something was done that maybe wasn't done the way it should have been handled. It wasn't handled the way it should have been handled. Instead of looking at that and saying, okay, what can we learn? Or yes, I made a mistake. I'm a bad boy. Um, and, and dealing with the consequences. We are, we are focusing everybody's, everybody's attention over there on, well, what about them? They didn't get in trouble. They weren't prosecuted. That it doesn't matter that that the situations are not identical, that it's apples and and kumquats. It's it's not the same thing. The same the thing is that if it happens on a regular basis, publicly, and on a standard that is that high as like the president of the United States, then how quickly does it become normalized for everybody else? in that country or in society or in the world to behave badly, to instead of standing up and saying, I did X, Y, or Z, and I will stand by my decision that I did those things, and I will deal with the consequences as they may be good or bad. Instead of doing that, if we continue to obfuscate and point over at someone else and say, but, but that's not fair because you didn't pick on them, then we end up starting, if we make that a normalized thing, then where will we end up? So I'm sitting at a red light and I'm, you know, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and it's not turning and it seems to be a problem with the stoplight and there's nobody coming and the guy who's in the second lane beside me runs the red light and I sit and wait for another minute and nothing changes. And then I run the red light because, heck, nobody's coming. What can it hurt? And when I run the red light, that's when a police officer happens to pull up beside me. And I get pulled over for running that red light. Who is responsible for that? I can make the argument that I've been sitting for seven minutes and the light never changed. Okay, in Canada, you can turn right in a red light. So why not just turn right and go about your business? Uh, but the point being that I ran a red light. It is illegal in Canada to run a red light. The police officer saw me run a red light. The consequences of that are I get pulled over and I get a ticket or I get a fine or I get a talking to or who knows. I don't know for sure what will happen when that police officer does his or her job. But I have to realize I made a mistake. I broke the law. And I must now face the consequences. Me sitting there and arguing with the police officer and saying, but the guy before me, that white pickup truck that three minutes ago drove through the red light, what about him? He didn't get in trouble. How come I have to get in trouble? What about him? That's got nothing to do with the case at hand. If we start, if we start buying into this idea that what about isms, I can't believe that people are using that phrase now, but that what about isms, are actually an okay thing then <laughs> what happens to standards what happens to the laws that everybody has to abide by there cannot be a standard set for 99.9 percent .9 of society and what about isms for the other 0.1 percent 
Whether that 0.1% is at the top of society or at the bottom of society, there needs to be a set standard and we all need to live into those standards. And if we do not know what those standards are, then we need to learn them. It's just part of being a responsible citizen, part of being a responsible person. I really do hope that we all, regardless of whether we're Christian or whatever we believe or we don't believe, begin to recognize that our humanity is dependent upon everyone living up to the higher standard than falling into the whataboutisms. Because when we do that, we become less than. We become less than compassionate. We become less than kind. We become less than what we are called to be. And from a Christian perspective, that's not an option. What about ism isn't something that Christ calls us to. Christ calls us to live up to the standard that he has given us. So whether you're Christian or not, what about isms really aren't a healthy thing. Standards are. How can we how can we pull back to our standards? How can we get our society back to that place where we acknowledge that maybe there are some things that are just the right way to do it and not worry so much about blaming someone else or, or shifting the focus when really the focus needs to be on us and our responsibility for taking care of our little part of the world. What do you think? Have a great day. God bless you. And I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.